Grand evening, grand afternoon, grand morning, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the MWR Financial Make Wealth Real University. My name is Daryl R. Banks, two-star executive director and founding member with MWR Financial and your host of this weekly Thursday night financial of education. This is our weekly corporate event where you get to hear from the experts and invited professionals to give you the education you need to succeed to get on the other side of money. We got some exciting information for you tonight. You certainly want to be sure to grab yourself a pen and a pad to take copious notes on the information that's going to be delivered tonight. Go ahead on and take this time to get your teams on, get your members on, because we definitely want your members to understand the true value of this exclusive invitation only membership offered from the ultimate cash flow company. If you have not yet visited our Facebook fan page, please do so at MWRfinancialResults.com so you too can see the results of thousands of people who have utilized this membership to get what they need to succeed to get on the other side of money. Let's see who we have out there on the line. Welcome into this live tonight. We got hello from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome. We also have out there calling in, dialing in Tampa, Florida. Ms. Lovely, welcome. Who else we have out there? San Francisco. Welcome. We also have out here Indianapolis. Welcome. Monterey, California. Welcome. Louisiana, welcome. Columbia, South Carolina, welcome. Raleigh, North Carolina in the house, welcome. Mississippi, welcome. We got Iowa, welcome. Mr. Purnell out of Durham, North Carolina, welcome. Wilson, Florida, welcome. Dover, welcome. Dallas, Texas, welcome. Richmond, Virginia, welcome. Florida, welcome. Michigan, welcome. Springs of Mississippi, welcome. Michigan again, welcome. Meridian, welcome. Chicago, welcome. Rochester, New York, welcome. People are chiming in from all over the country, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get started because we got a lot of information to give you in a short period of time. The gentleman I'm about to bring on, he brings over a decade success in the financial services space. He is a lead financial consultant in the area of investments and also the lead consultant of our MWR Multiply Cash Flow Division. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the live Mr. Cord Burner. Mr. Burner. Can you hear me? Man, I can hear you. We can see you. Looking great. The live is yours. All right. Excellent. Before we dive in, thank you much for the introduction, man. You always make me feel 10 feet tall and got, you know, the eight pack, 12 pack, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit better put together, but I appreciate the introduction and your friendship. And we're going to dive right into something that is literally my favorite conversation on the planet. Uh, it's, it's something that is built, build wealth. Uh, it's, it's one of the first things that is built wealth throughout our entire history as humans. And it's often referred to as what the kind of outside the, uh, uh the norm investment, uh, uh, the speculative type of investment, but I, I, I got to think and say to whom, you know, land was here well before we were, and it was the first and most sustainable way that people have crafted and, and, and passed on wealth for literal generations. We're going to talk about not only uh, how it's functioned over a, a period of time, but an area specifically that it's thriving and uh, it, it's thriving when other areas of the market are not, unfortunately. Think about the 401k markets. We've had a little bit of an uptick. I will say it's been nice to have some semblance of a recovery if you've got money in the market. Uh, but some people would believe it's probably not sustainable. So when's the best time to start to reallocate some money to make sure that you can capture some of those gains? It could be right now. Uh, I'm going to speak to you guys from a perspective of a parcel owner. I'm somebody that uh, puts my money where my mouth is. And I like to share that on the front end with you guys because uh, far too often you'll see portfolios of people that their advisors don't even uh, have the same holdings. You guys know what I'm saying? Like, So if you go to your, your advisor or somebody that's, that's uh, managing your money in the market, I want you to ask that guy, well, do you have the same investments that I do or anything that's even close to what I do? Uh, 99.9% of the time, they're going to say no. So if they don't have their money there, why would you? It's something that's incredibly frustrating. We are the company to where we, what we say we do, meaning that this isn't just theory. Everybody is using it. We're practicing it. We're living it. This is why MWR Financial as a platform is a literal ministry. There's nothing worse than people that try to tell you what to do, but they don't mind their own <laughs> advice. 
Uh, and, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So land banking, guys, as I as I bring this up on the screen, why is this so critical? And why, you know, more importantly, why are so many people having such a, why are they seeing so much massive success with this? Um, well, I mean, look at the testimonials. They kind of speak for themselves, but we're going to talk about why uh, it, this area has been growing specifically and why you want to consider taking some money that you may have in your retirement accounts, like a 401k or an IRA, and potentially owning something that's got tangibility, land banking. Uh, what I love about real estate is it's not immune to the laws of economics. Land isn't but it tends to weather the storms a little bit better because it's not, you know, money here one day, money gone the next. If you get what I'm saying, it's like you have a great day in the market. Well, what happened to the next day? Did it have a great day or did it not? Right. It's like sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. This is something that's got a lot of stability to it and tangibility. And it's a true asset diversification tool that we want to talk about today. So land banking is very simple, my friends. That's why I like it. Right. It's it's something to where you buy land before it's needed for development. Hold it for about a seven to 10 year period and then sell it for more than you bought it for. Pretty simple. Right. But you want to do it in an area that's growing, that's got that trajectory, that's got the opportunity, not in somewhere, you know, in, in some backyard in Swampville's USA, right? You want to have some purpose, some data, you want to have research, some indicators uh, that's going to help you determine, are you making a good decision or not? Uh, but guys, more importantly, major companies and investors have been building wealth this way for centuries, and you can do it with as little as $40,000 more in cash or existing investments. That's the thing that excites me the most. Is because when you think about wealth and how it's transferred and how it's been tra transferred uh, for generations, uh, this is how they do it, right? They've they've shown this. Think about Walmart, uh, McDonald's. They are one of the largest real estate owners, uh, one of the largest real estate companies on the planet, uh, and they're not really in the real estate game, are they? I mean, of course, they got to buy the real estate to build the buildings on, uh, but they've got an incredible model. Have you guys ever seen um, uh, Ray Kroc? Uh, um, I forget the. The name of the movie, but he talks about they talk about how McDonald's is not in the burger business, right? They're in the real estate business and they made an incredible model off of that. So, guys, where is all of this happening and where's the research being poured in and where are all the testimonials that you see on the pages? How are they getting the results? Well, it's within this 60 mile radius. And I want you to look at the largest economy, second in the US, right? You can see it's 15th in the world. And this 60 mile radius, what's interesting about it is you notice what, about a third of this is in the water? <laughs> so there's not people living in the water, I can promise you. So you've got over 50% of Californians' total population, that's 19.2 million uh, people, within you know about two-thirds of this 60-mile radius. They're anticipating 2 million more people over the next decade. So let's put this in perspective. There's more people living in this area. They call it the, the megapolis, right? The LA Basin. Then the state of New York, or is the state of Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, Idaho, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, and New Mexico combined. There's a lot of people here. But what's interesting about people is that they've been living here for a long time, right? This area is fully developed. That's one of the challenges. You look at some of these homes that were built in the 1900s that don't even have air conditioning units. That are, that are uh, The median housing income price in this area is $700,000. So for up and coming and growing families, that's simply out of their financial reach, isn't it? Well, so where are they naturally progressing? Well, it's, they're going to these outer areas because they're more affordable. I mean, that's just the long short of it. If this area has been fully developed and you're, you know, most people that are buying homes that were built in the 1900s just run down uh, and, and they're, you know, overpriced, that, you know, it's just unaffordable. Uh, these grow, these rolling hills here, green areas, this is not, uh, you, you can't build in this area. So naturally they're going to the Palmdale and Lancaster area. Uh, look at this area here. You can see all these red markings. Walmart's here, Home Depot, the Antelope Valley Hospital, 24-hour fitness target. You notice this square here. This is a parcel that was bought and sold. Uh, you can check the, the data here through the assessor parcel number. That's what APN means. Uh, and it's it's just right in, the, uh, right in the heart of the action, right? It's not at the uh, outskirts, you know, way out here. It's right in the midst of where the action's happening. Uh, it's a stone throw, stone's throw away from a gorgeous facility called the Kaiser Permanente, and uh, they're, if you guys aren't familiar with Kaiser Permanente, they're a hospital, they're, they're um, in a lot of health, uh, a lot of health quality type uh, stuff. Um, but this 
facility specifically. I've been here, gosh, about five, six times. It's it's gorgeous. And the reason why I keep going back is because, you know, the, the years that I go in and look at the facility, it's just constantly changing. Uh, I'm going within six months, within 12 months. And uh, when I come back after six or 12 months, it's like the area is just it's, it's expanding so rapidly. Just new things are popping up all the time. But what's interesting about this building specifically is I want you guys to pull your attention towards these waves. Notice that's glass and it's got a wave texture to it. And the reason why this is amazing is because it's designed to harness all this natural energy and to use it to, to power the entire facility. It's gorgeous. Not only are they, they taking the natural light and refracting it back in this uh, set and it's lighting up the facility, but they have a wind turbine system that collects natural energy and they use it to, to, to power the building and the facility. Why is that critical? Because if they're not spending money on powering the facility, that means they can redirect those dollars into innovation. And the more innovative that they are in this area, the more uh, attraction power they continue to have. It's kind of like the field of dreams. If you guys have ever seen that movie, uh, they talk about, you know, if you build it, they will come, right? If you continue to attract and have all these innovative ideas, it naturally is going to continue to pull the attention of potential investors and people that are looking to live in a, in, a, in a thriving area. So you've also got this $234 million courthouse. They've got two in this area that the city's already spent. It's erect. It's servicing the community. What does that mean? That they know something that we don't know. But it's not just the government that knows a little bit. It's Walmart. What's interesting about Walmart is I don't think, you know, I, I'm, I'm 34, right? So I'm, I'm a young guy. Out of the 34 years that I've been on this earth, I have yet to see a Walmart fail once. If you guys, maybe there's one out there. Maybe there's an anomaly. But I have yet to see Walmart fail one time. And they got massive buildings. They've got a way of servicing communities that they know uh, process-wise what to do. They've got an incredible research and development team, right? They don't do this willy-nilly. They do this with a lot of thought. Uh, excuse me, a lot of thought into building and servicing the communities. An average Walmart, my friends, is going to service 250,000 neighboring residents. And that's one. They've got five in this area. It's massive. So what does that tell us again? You don't have to have the research and development team uh, to know that there's something going on. You want to ride the coattails of people that know a little bit better uh, or, you know, they've got access to information that we may not have, but it's kind of obvious. If they see the growth here, you know that there's something big that's coming. Uh, Walmart, if it was ranked as an economy, it would be 19th as a country, which is incredible to me. Uh, they are very good at what they do. Uh, you've also got Mr. Warren Buffett, right? He needs no introduction, my friends. This is a gentleman that has uh, an amazing investment career. Uh, somebody that's widely recognized as one of the most astute investors that we've seen uh, in 100 years, right, in, in this generation. He's got two and a half billion dollars. That's with a B. Uh, he invested two and a half billion dollars to build a twin solar project. As you can see, it's massive, which means uh, that, well, by the way, that's not his only project he has. He's got $230 million in the acquisition of a 10% stake and a company that's called BYD. That's an acronym that stands for Build Your Dreams. So $230 million plus $2.5 billion, this man has invested a lot of time and attention as well as money. He knows that this, this area is growing. There's an incredible of uh, amount of opportunity. If any of you guys have ever read Mr. Warren Buffett's autobiography, he talks about his investing principles. And what is his first rule? Go ahead and type it in there. I can't really see because of the way that the screen is, but I'm going to assume that you're saying never lose money. And he talks about his second rule. What is his second rule? Refer back to rule number one. So if he's putting $2.5 billion with a B in an area, he's got a little bit of certainty. He's got a lot of research in this area. He knows that there's a lot of buzz. There's the High Desert Regional Healthcare Center. It was uh, awarded the LEED Platinum Certification from the U.S. Green Building Council. Why do I like to share this? Because, again, the, the goal here is to be the green energy capital of the world. They want an entirely sustainable community that's off the grid. And this was the original uh, um, uh, building that put this together in 2015. They're sharing the technology that was implemented on the Kaiser Permanente facility. So their goal is, again, to be sustainable. And if they're not using dollars to power facilities, they can be innovative in the things that they're doing within their everyday research. It just keeps getting better. We've got the Palmdale Transit Village Center. 
This is an amazing facility. It's uh, not only is it built, but it's been completed. And why this is amazing is because it had two different phases. So imagine that you're, I mean, we're all business owners, right? And you've got an idea. Like you're, you're thinking on your couch and you're like, man, uh, I see Palmdale as, as, as an innovative place. I can see that there's the attraction power. I'm going to be a builder. I'm going to go and erect 122 different townhomes. And you get the plans together. You get all the architecture. You, you know, you get the green light from the local municipalities, right? They say, great, go ahead and build it. And you put it out on the, on the market and it gets sold within 48 hours. Are you going to probably replicate and do that again? It's like, absolutely. So they had a second phase. They had 122 townhomes that they did in their second phase. It was sold out within 24 hours. I mean, that's massive. So there's a huge incentives for people that are innovative, right? Builders that that see that have the foresight to, to see the opportunities. That's where, you know, that, that's where we're, we're sharing this information with you. We see the, the, uh, the opportunity. It's all about being decisive and making a decision so that you can be a part of the, the opportunity. It's kind of like the building or the swell of a wave. What part do you want to be on, right? You want to be, uh, you want to be on the wave before it capsizes. You want to be uh, to where there's the opportunity, and then it, you know, after it's done spilling over, then that's where most people, you know, jump in, and they've already missed the lion's share of the opportunity. It's the, uh, you know, the innovators, people that are taking uh, the early adopters that tend to 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 get all the the, the rewards. What does fortune favor? The bold, my friends, and we've got the high speed rail system. This is. Uh, when I looked at this information for the first time and, and I'm looking through the eyes of an investor, I'm like, man, this thing is crazy uh, incredible. If you guys have been outside the country, maybe like the Asian continents or Europe, European continents, uh, you know that our our transit system is as is, is close to the Stone Age as it can be. Uh, every other country on the planet has these high speed rail systems and we're just finally adopting them. But what's neat about this is they have this all the way to the tippy top of Sacramento. It's going to have a stop you can see here in San Francisco all the way down uh, to Stockton, Modesto. Uh, but most importantly, you notice where, where uh, it's got all these uh, red line connected to it and a blue line? That's Palmdale. It's a major hub for these different connectors. So there's a 230-mile route with a stop with a planned stop in Palmdale that's going to connect directly into where? Las Vegas, the city of lights. Right, an amazing place to go and, and visit for an evening. Uh, hopefully, you make it home sometime before you lose uh, or make a lot of money. Who, who knows how your gambling goes? But uh, that's that's a huge incentive for both parties, right? Californians, uh, California is a state. They want to make money. They want to attract the uh, especially in in Las Vegas. They tend to to have some money and opportunity. And then the city of lights, Las Vegas, they want to have that attraction power as well. Well, now they've got a direct route from Las Vegas to Palmdale. You can literally, you know, jump on the transit system right after work, be in the city of lights in no time, go and, you know, have an incredible night, jump back on and be home for dinner if you wanted to. I mean, it's just, a, it's incredible. You've also got this red line. You can see that there's going to be connecting lines all the way through. Uh, they've got a lot of incredible plans. But what I like about this slide specifically, I'm going to go back here, is that uh, Richard Branson is the gentleman that's now heading up this. He's been doing, he's been uh, a part of this project since 2019. So Richard Branson, for those of you guys that don't know, I think he's one of the only billionaires uh, out there that can rock a 70s haircut and still get away with it. I mean, I guess if you have enough money, you can do what you want. Uh, but he's responsible for an incredible amount of, of high quality companies. You got Virgin Air, Virgin Galactic, Virgin Mobile. This guy, uh, they call him uh, Mr. Midas for a reason. Everything he touches turns to gold. He is a guy with a vision plan. Uh, and when he puts his mitts on something, it gets completed and done. So that's something that uh, I love. Not only do you have all these different people, all, all these different, you know, you've got Nevada involved in this. So there's there's a lot of people with, with uh, we'll say, deep pockets that want to make this a reality. Uh They've also got Northrop in this area. They've got a hundred long range bombers that are being built over the next decade. That's 6,000 new aerospace jobs coming to the Palmdale area. Uh, incredible. Why, you know, why do we share this? Um, because when you have high quality, highly specialized jobs, again, it's about opportunity. And if there's highly paid compensated opportunity, people are going to naturally, you know, live in this area. Number one, it's more affordable. And then you can work, you know, just down the street and, and build these long range bombers. But uh, what I liked is uh, we went to the facility and I got to interview one of the, the higher end uh, executive, one of the managers of the 
of Northrop. And they were talking about uh, it's kind of an investors or I guess what to look for in the next decade as they're building out to their, their facilities. Uh, they talked about how they have enough contracts currently being uh, currently awarded, funded, being built on to sustain the entire company for a decade. So that means they, if they don't onboard one more contract for 10 years, they have enough to not only be profitable, to, but to support their current workforce. That's amazing to me. But the, you, it's not only Northrop that's here. You've got NASA, fairly well-recognized brand. you got the Air Force. you got the Navy. They're all redesigning major uh, weapon systems and all have significant facilities in this area. You've got Amazon that recently closed on a million-square-foot facility. Uh, it's massive, right? And they're, they're, they're building that out currently. So, you know, not only Amazon, but you've got this, the uh, KB Homes. This is a, uh, a home manufacturing uh, a builder that had vision like it was unbelievable. Uh, think about, let, let's talk about solar. What do we love about solar, guys? We love that there's savings tied to this, right? It's it's like solar panels are, are amazing because you can now, again, harness natural energy, use it to power the house, and it's a lot cheaper, which means that you've now brought in additional cash flow into the house. We talk about cash flow, how it's king, and that's you know one unique way that you can start to free up additional cash flow. Well, what's the problem with solar panels is they're not aesthetically pleasing. They're kind of eyesores, aren't they? You know in your neighborhood who has solar panels. It's not like uh, it's something to be excited about other than the savings. Well, they now have what they call photovoltaic roofing panels that are designed to look aesthetically pleasing, exactly like roofing tiles, except they have the benefits of solar. So you not only get that aesthetically, you know, gorgeous look, but you get the benefits. And uh, the KB Homes, not only do they have these photovoltaic roofing panels, but they're saving about $4,400, $4,452 in energy. That includes water savings as well. They've got purple pipe, a, a water reclamation system that's designed to, to, to use, to, to, to recapture and reuse water, uh, whether it's on their lawns or it's, it's in the sink water again to cut costs so it's they've got 180,000 of these units that were being built between 2014 and 2021 uh this is a few years behind and in fact they've already well they're getting closer to, to completing their uh final leg of these homes of course with covid uh it put a tremendous hold on it uh as well as some of the material costs what what they thought they were going to build they had to slow down on a little bit but this is now complete right covid's something of the past and what I loved about COVID is, is what? Um, it, it forced people to uh, kind of think of what they want, right? What, what's the next play? What are some alternative uh, ideas that I should consider? And uh, that's, again, this is why land banking is so dang important, guys. I want to share with you, after all the evidence, after all you know the stats and studies that we've gone through, I want to share with you a, uh, $9, 000, uh, a, a study that is in excess of 9,000 properties sold. Uh, this was over a 17-year period, right? This is the analytics. And the results over that 17-year period was the average property annual appreciation rate was 24%. And the average hold period was 3.7 years. Now, I want to be uh, clear with you guys is that I'm not promising you a 24% return, but you can look through the testimonial page and you can see that there's returns that have been much higher than 24%. But what if you only got 12 Let's say, you know, maybe you, you didn't get 24, but you got 12. Would you you'd be happy with the 12% return? Of course you would. 12% is a highly coveted and, 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 and sought after return. I mean, most investors, they're looking at 6 7 or 8%. 24% average annual appreciation rate, and the average hold period was 3.7 years. Uh, guys, remember, this is a 7 to a 10-year hold, right? We want to build expectations for a 7 to, ten, to a 10-year commitment, uh, of course, they have sold earlier, as you can see through the studies and data. But, uh, you know, that's that's one of the caveats of this program. This is an illiquid asset, right? It's something to where you buy. But it's, what's neat about this is you get a deed and a title to uh, to the, the land parcel itself. So there's all sorts of verification. So, guys, who is land banking right for? It's for those that are looking for a long term or stable investment. Maybe you've got money inside of the, that 401k that you're kind of unhappy about it. it's like gosh this thing goes up and down and i don't really determine its value it's somebody else that you know will communicate some type of decision whether it be of a political nature of uh or maybe they misbalance their 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 uh 
profit and loss statements like these banks, right? You've got uh, major banks that are going out of business that are affecting the entire economy. We are a global economy, so we got to make sure that we're globally being conscious. Make sure to have some of these tangible assets inside of your portfolio and not all in something that's a little bit unpredictable. Maybe you're recovering from a stock market loss. You finally grew a little bit of, of what you lost over the last you know, couple of years. You know what's kind of shocking is did you guys know that we had – uh, uh tw over 22 so we had 12 years of gains that were wiped out within 22 months we had 12 years of gains that were wiped out within 22 months how long are we going to continue to perpetuate money you know on these ups and downs uh have you thought about something that's consistent right that has tangibility we talked about how again land isn't immune to the laws of economics but it weathers the storms better right it's not something that's going to walk away it's going to have a value no matter what Guys, maybe you're, you're, you know, we're going to just read through these. Needing peace of mind about retirement. You're tired of worrying about economic volatility. We talked about that. You're worried about how your estate will be distributed. You know, I, you know I've, I've helped a couple of families to where, you know, the, uh, uh, the patriarch was, was at his end. And, you know, he's got money in different places. And he's worried about the people that he's going to pass his estate money on to that they're going to burn through it quickly. And he took a sizable amount of that estate and he put it into land to where they got to wait at least seven to 10 years uh, or longer, you know, seven to 10 years to liquidate and to, to burn through the money. So hopefully they can be a little bit wiser as they go through the process. So it's a great way to give on, uh, to, to pass on and a tremendous benefit, but also, you know, have a little bit of rule sets there. Holding $40,000 or more in a qualified account, portfolio account, or cash equivalent. Guys, here's all the different ways that you can participate. Cash. SEP IRAs, did you know that you could own real estate inside of your individual retirement account, an IRA, a 403B, a TSP, a 457, a 529 plan, right? Most people don't know that you can, in your retirement accounts, you can actually own real estate when done properly with the specialist. So guys, as we wrap up here, have you guys ever said, if I would have known then what I know now, life would have been different today? I know that's true for me on many accounts. I remember growing up as a kid, some of you guys know, but some of you don't know. I spent the better part of my childhood raised in a trailer, right? Love my pops. He's, he's my hero. And, uh, you know, he always did whatever he could to make sure that we had a roof over our head and, uh, and a full belly. I appreciate him. But, uh, you know, there was, there was a place uh, in the back of our, our little trailer park that just had fields and fields of, of corn and, you know, weeds and, and dirt and everything. And, you know, we'd ride our motorcycles, our uh, motorcycles, our bikes, whatever, you know, we could go and play around in, 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 the, in the dirt back there. Uh, we did that for years, you know, 15, 16. No, let's see, I moved out of 16. So about 16 years. Well, I came back, it was seven years later. And that plot that was back there it had developed into an entire community so do you guys believe that if i would have bought if i would have had the foresight to purchase before the development came in that there would have been a lot of money to be had it's like of course well that's what we're talking about today is, is being decisive decisions you want to get there before everybody else does that's where you can reap the rewards and the benefits of an opportunity my friends i'm going to leave you with one thing we talked about it last time that i was here but it was so profound to me and it's something that's just been at the top of the, my mind that i want to share with it, share it with you again today so guys we all know that athlete that uh grew up in challenging situations right there they're, uh, you know, maybe their mom and dad just aren't present. Uh, maybe they're in a bad neighborhood, but, you know, they kind of keep to themselves and they continue to hone their skills. And eventually they get into college and they continue to hold their, you know, hone their skills and they make it to the NFL. Right? We all know of that athlete that, came, that, was, that was born in the gutter and made it to, to greatness. Well, what about that um, uh, somebody in the media, right? What about an actor that, uh, you know, the story that they, they go to all these parts and they can't, they, they can't seem to get the part. It's like, nobody's looking twice at them. They're like, Hey, you're not right for it. You're not right for it. They keep passing on them. And then all of a sudden they get that br big breakthrough and they're on everything, right? They're in movies, they're in, uh, your commercials, they're in, uh, you know, they're, they're just everywhere. You know, what that shares with me is that we're born looking like our parents we're born into this world looking like our parents, but we're going to die looking like our decisions. So I want to say that one more time just so that we can kind of uh, resonate with this before we exit today. We are born in this world looking like our parents, but we are going to die. Uh, you know, we're going to live and die based on our decisions. So what do you decide to be? Who do you decide to show up as today? 
decisions. Those that are decisive, they tend to have access to, you know, they, they tend to make the decisions that put them on the other side of money. Uh, have you ever thought about the, the, the difference between the have and have nots? It's typically decisiveness. When they see an opportunity, they take advantage of it. They don't hem haw. They don't, you know, go back and forth 15 different times. Even if it's the wrong decision, they make that decision quickly and they act on it. You're an MWR member. I'm so grateful to be a part of this community. You guys have no idea how much you inspire me. This is the juice. Being able to share this, this atmosphere with you guys that are out there sharing the good information that are you know, actively pursuing changing communities. When I think about how would we repair the world, I believe that if we can do it one neighborhood at a time, that that's the best way, that's the most effective way that we can change not only our personal economies, but we can have a profound effect on this world. So with that being said, my friends, I'm going to pass this back to Mr. Daryl. I appreciate your time and attention, my friends. As always, we'll see you next time. Can't wait to see you in a few weeks. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Berna, this information that you just delivered to us, and we're learning about cash, being able to purchase an asset that creates more cash flow. And certainly this is a cash flow asset all day long. So guys, please get back to our uh, multiply your uh, cash flow division, set up your consultations, and let's go ahead on and make a difference. We'll see you next Thursday on the platform. And with that being said, good night, everyone.